I welcome you one, I welcome you all. We are back at it again. Verbatim Christian Network's presentation on the State of the Union. A series of daily live broadcasts all hinged on a word from the Lord saying, tell my people to return to me. Now for about a week now, we have been looking at reasons to return as different from what we have been looking at in the past three months on the possible areas where we may have failed or be failing for which God is saying, tell my people to return. We are, uh, at the moment, looking at the place of wisdom as per why we need to return. So if you hear a message that says, tell my people, that God says, tell my people to return, wisdom demands that you ask yourself why I need to return. Ask yourself, perhaps, from your understanding of what may be available from scripture why do I need to return that is if you do not even know the things that we have addressed already but just for yourself why do I need to return it is those things that we have been considering perhaps the last five or so days now and so yesterday or in fact two days ago we began to look at why I need to return from the aspect of the fact that those he calls, he glorifies. Romans chapter 8, verse 30. If God says, tell my people to return to me, it is a call back to God. And he says that whoever he calls, he glorifies. So if you answer that call in returning to him, it is guaranteed by the word of God that he will glorify you. Now, what does it mean to glorify somebody? If you are joining us for the first time, you may need to rewind as far back as two, day, two or three days ago and uh, avail yourself of, of that day's episode of this series of broadcasts where we answered that question. But in a nutshell, God glorifying you just simply means God decorating you, decorating your destiny with something enviable something that will cause people around you to marvel. So moving forward from that, beyond God wanting to glorify you, there is a reason he wants to glorify you. Yes, the pipe that carries water will necessarily get wet. So yes, he will glorify you for you sake. People will see you and wonder, what are you doing? What, what are you doing different? And you'll be saying, it's God, or oh, it's God, or... Oh. Or you'll be saying, oh, it's the glory of God, or oh, it's the glory of God. So he wants to glorify you for your sake. That's true. But on the flip side, he wants to glorify you for his sake. That is, as we say in proper English, for his sake. He wants to glorify you because of something about himself. He wants to showcase himself to the world through you otherwise known as he wants to use you so he says come back because one he wants to glorify you and then two he wants to use you which is what we want to look at today but yesterday we saw something in between glorifying you and using you when god says to the body of christ tell my people to return to me when you return you'll be returning to god in christ to the body you'll be returning to the body so yesterday we saw that he is telling you come back to your place in the body because the body cannot function properly without your being there just as this body you are looking at cannot function properly if the little finger is missing or if the thumb is missing or in fact if the nose is missing can function properly. Even if it is not missing, if it is malfunctioning, the whole body will suffer. So the body of Christ is suffering because you are not there. Because you have walked away. 
probably you have turned your back on God or you have turned your back on the church or you have turned your back on, on God in some way, although you are still in the church. To the degree that you have turned your back, whether you have become completely separated in your mind, being that you have walked away and said, I'm not doing again, it's not working. Or you have turned your back on some aspect. Or you have turned your back because you didn't see the results expected. Whatever it may be, to the degree that you are in that state, to that degree the body of Christ malfunctions. We saw that yesterday. So in returning to the body, you'll be bringing the body back to the position of full function. That was yesterday. So today, we look at the other side of why God wants to glorify you. Yes, in your returning and God glorifying you, He's glorifying you in you, but He's glorifying you for the body. It's not just you who He wants to glorify, He wants to glorify the body. Now, in glorifying the body, the body as was with Jesus the Christ, God wants to use it to showcase himself. But for that to happen, you will first have to return. You will first have to return. You will first have to return. So, today, Today, there is another reason God wants you in the body, besides guaranteeing that the body is whole and therefore positioned to function properly. Besides that, there is another reason, in fact, another series of reasons. All of them, we can say all of them amount to one thing, but different aspects of it. Why God wants you to return. He says, tell my people to return to me. You know, putting it loosely, God cannot function on the earth without the agency of a man. Without the agency of a man. And that a man is you. Which is why he's saying, tell my people to return. There are some things he has designed, he has marked, proposed in you. And so, to, so long as you are away from him, he can't do those things. Perhaps you don't understand that you are unique. All right, look in the mirror and tell me how many people you have seen who has exactly the same, who have the same shape of nose as yourself. Okay, the scientists know this. How many people do you know that have the same fingerprint as yourself? That's how unique you are. Now, if you are unique, it means that you were made you, just you by yourself as only you. Nobody else exactly matches everything that you are. There's a reason for that. God wants this one like this for a purpose. So in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, for example, it says, We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. How are you going to walk in anything that is in Christ when you have walked away? Or you are backsliding and backsliding. Backsliding means you are in the process, you are in the cause of it. You haven't finished the backsliding. Backsliding means you have you have gone backwards. You have returned to some past state. It says where is workmanship created unto good works. There is something good for which God created you in Christ. And I said two or three days ago, you cannot know it except you return. That's one. You cannot fulfill it except you return. And therefore Christ cannot be glorified in that matter when you are not there. So you see what you are doing by staying away. You are denying Christ his glory. Besides denying yourself the glory that was designed for you ever before you were created. So that's one aspect of God wanting to use you. There is something good in the earth that God wants you, that God wants to use you to do. Something. I know a man. He said, God said to him, 
any young person you see who has a problem with schooling any aspect of schooling whether it be school fees or some exam fee or so something so long as it pertains to school and the fellow does not have money to pay for it take care of the problem for him I know such a person that's his aspect of good works sort out any person who has financial issues where it comes to the business of school and schooling whether it is some professional exam he wants to write it's still a form of schooling pay for it for him that's good works purpose number two if we say good works purpose number one purpose number two the Bible generally refers to the Christian and therefore the church as an army. It says, endure affliction like a good soldier. It says, who goes to war paying his way by himself? That is, who goes to war buying his uniform and, and bullets and gun by himself? No, the government takes care of that. Or your, your, your sending agency takes care of that. But he uses the word war. Which, which, which is language for army. Now we saw yesterday that God referred to the, to the body of the nation Israel as a mighty army, Ezekiel chapter 37. And we know that that is a shadow of the church. Now, why does God need you in the army called the church? Because there is a raging battle. Yes, the, 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 the mother of that battle, the mother of all battles, has been won on the cross. But we need to enforce that victory. So we are like an army of occupation in the earth. We need to enforce the victory at the cross. Now in this battle, God wants to use his church. God wants to use the church to showcase his wisdom to the enemy. So he says in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10, for example, to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Ephesians 3.10 God wants to use the church of which you are a part. Now, how is God going to use the church to show forth his wisdom if you are not there? Or if you insist on staying away? If God is going to use you to showcase his wisdom, guess what? He is going to have to, first of all, share that wisdom with you. Somehow. Now, just now, less than three hours ago, I met a young man. He actually told me his age. He's 29. And he told me that this is how God gave him wisdom, understanding concerning life and business. He says the Holy Spirit took him to Genesis chapter 1, where he talks about the four rivers watering the Garden of Eden. And then he asked him, do you know the meaning of the names of all those places? And then he starts to explain to him, the first one means to scatter. One means breakthrough or breaking forth. The other one, the, the last one, the phrase is, means, means uh, um, fr fruitfulness. And he said, the Holy Spirit said to him that when you first start out, you are going to be involved in many different things because you are not sure which one will work. So he said, that's the time of sowing your seed all over the place. You are scattering your seed all over the place. You are scattering your effort all over the place. He said, but there comes a time that one will break forth. There will be a breakthrough about one. And from that one, as it breaks forth and begins to manifest, you will receive empowerment to now go back to the other ones which have lain fallow because they didn't break forth. You can now go back and, and, and empower those ones to grow. And then suddenly you have about seven businesses all doing well because one did well. And he says, and then suddenly you are in the place of fruitfulness. Now, he's using scripture to explain something to the young man. And so the young man is saying to me that he has moved from the stage of doing all kinds of things. He can now concentrate on just a few. 
He is explaining the wisdom of God that God has shared with him in the course of his being a businessman. He's just 29. Before God will use you to showcase his wisdom, he must first share that wisdom. That's why I said the pipe that bears water will also get wet. There's no way God is going to glorify you and you not enjoying some of that glory. There's no way God is going to use you in an effort without first empowering you. But so long as you have stayed away, you cannot receive or enjoy or understand or come in contact with that empowerment. He says to the intent now, unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Manifold means he has is multifaceted. Multifaceted. It has many different diverse angles. Touching different aspects and different areas of life. So no matter where you may be plugged in into the business called life, no matter at what point you are plugged in, there is the wisdom of God available for that place, available for that place, to be made manifest to you and in you and therefore through you in that place. But then God meets you for other things. I'm talking about God saying, tell my people to return to me. And therefore, the place of wisdom for my hearer today it should be, when you hear God says, tell my people to return to me, you should wonder, why do I need to return? Almost like, what's in it for me? What's God up to? Why do I need to return? That's different from God being the accuser and saying, you have done this, you have done this wrong, you have done that wrong, you need to come back and correct it so that you can work properly. Not that. Just the place of wisdom for you ask him what's in it for me why do i need to return you need to return return because god wants to glorify you you need to return because god has a place for you no matter how whoever else may have made you feel at the time that you had you had, you had stayed in the church which perhaps made you leave there is a place for you if god places the solitary in families. If God places the solitary in homes, then God can find a place for you in his house, the church. But God has other needs besides just glorifying you, besides using you for good works, besides using you to showcase his wisdom. Now Mark, Jesus said, let your light so shine that men will see and glorify your Father in heaven. Let your light so shine. Who is Jesus talking to? Well, in that index case, he was talking to his disciples. That's a reference to the church. He says, let your light. That automatically implies that there is a your light. Otherwise, he wouldn't have said it. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it was not so, I wouldn't tell that. I would tell you that there's no such thing. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it wasn't so, I would tell you. In the same way, let your light so shine implies that there is your light. If there was no your light, he would not say let your light shine. So there is a light that God has already earmarked for you, deposited in you, perhaps even activated where you are concerned. But you walked away. You walked away. And in walking away or in turning away, you became disconnected from the source of the light. So it seems like the light has gone out. It didn't go out. It, it seems like it has gone out because you turned away from the source of it. So you need to turn right back so that that light can reflect off of you once again. And now the purpose is there. He said, let your light so shine that men will see. This is the ultimate. God wants the light reflecting off from him through you for men to see. God wants to use you to reach men, people. Why? So that in seeing this your light, they will glorify God 
on your behalf. You see, God wants you to use God wants to use you to glorify Himself. Shouldn't you think that that is an honor? Shouldn't you be wowed by that? God wants to use who are who are me? You should be asking. Who am I? God wants to use me to glorify Himself. Well, ask Moses. He said, "I can't talk." Lord, find somebody else. Well, the rest is history. Yes, he found somebody else to be the mouthpiece, but it was Moses he wanted. God wants to use you to show himself to the world. But to do that, he has to first of all put the light on you. Now imagine you are walking down the street and you are radiating light. Imagine you are walking down the street and the glory of God is radiating from you. However that may turn out to be or, or whatever that may turn out to be. But let's imagine it as just light. It says light. So let's imagine it as light. Or glory. Let's just imagine it as some kind of glow. So you are walking down the road and you are glowing. Or you go to, 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 to a party, let's say. You go to some, a place where there are other people. And then you are just standing there all by yourself and you are glowing. What do you think is going to happen? You are going to become the center of attraction. He says, Arise and shine, for your light has come. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He wants to glorify you. So in glorifying you, he puts his light on you. So he says, Arise and shine. How can you shine when you have walked away? So he wants to use you to shine before me. So that as they see you, they wonder and then they wonder about your God. And then they end up saying your God is a good God. And then finally, I, I know my time is, is fast, fast running out. I just have a couple of minutes left. So finally, another area that God wants, as it were, to use you. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 30 or thereabouts. It says God has set some in the church for specific tasks and offices and with specific giftings of the Holy Spirit. We can't all be apostles. We can't all be evangelists. We can't all be prophets. We can't all be general overseers. We can't all be those things. But you can be what God wants you to be. You can be what God wants you to be. But there's something that he wants you to be. I'll share with you what I know to be mine. Among other things. From way back, at least, at least for the last perhaps almost 30 years now. Every time I think about this, I automatically see a picture of me in the church. That's a church building now. I see myself in a church building and I'm standing upon some kind of elevated platform like a scaffold and I'm painting the inside of the church white. Every time I think about it, that's the picture that comes to mind immediately. So I know that I have a place in the church, in quote, to paint it white. In court, this is not about a physical structure or a physical white paint and physical brush painting a physical church in white paint. But I understand what the Lord is talking about. And I'm sitting right here right now and I'm doing that exact job. Restoring the glory of the church. I asking you to return. Praise the Lord. I'm doing my own. What about you? What's your own? Do you know that somebody else will receive the accolades and the glory and the reward for your assigned task if you end up not being the one who did it? Do you know that at the end of it all, there is a welcome, my faithful servant, that awaits whoever does his task? What's it going to be? Do you want to take your chances with such a thing? 
or you want to be smart right now and just return it's so easy just return you know in your heart where you turn away or what 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 the problem is just return you can just lift up your hand and say father by the holy spirit i return to you help me restore me to my original place Restore me in the body. Restore me in your glory. Father, I return to you now in the name of Jesus. It is really that simple. Ask the prodigal son. He just went back home. He had planned that he was going to tell his father this and that. He never got the chance to do so. Not really. Why? His father, the moment his father saw him from a distance, the father ran to him. The father was not interested in any speech. The father was interested that his son was back home. Will you come back home today? The father says, I should tell you to come back home to me. To him. There's so much he wants to lay on you. There's so much he wants to tell you. There's so much he wants to discuss with you. And of course, there's so much that he wants to pass through you to the world. But it is not going to happen until and unless you return. This is my pitch for today. Tomorrow we'll be back at it at some other angle. But this is Elias signing out and saying, until we see you again same time tomorrow, God bless you.